Supercar heritage doesn't just belong in Italy. Mercedes-Benz has plenty of it too, much of which you'll find in the hallowed halls of its British brand centre here at Brooklands, a museum, a test track and the world's most exclusive car showroom all rolled into one. This is where some of the company's wealthiest customers come to specify, sign up and speed in uh, some of the Mark's most dynamic and exclusive models. And it's where we've come to try one of the fastest and most desirable designs the German maker has ever unleashed upon us, the SLS AMG Roadster. At Mercedes-Benz, competition pedigree is hardwired into the corporate DNA. From the silver arrows of the 30s and the exploits of Moss and Fangio to the way that in recent years, Mercedes has provided engines for some of the greatest names in Formula One. Hakkinen, Raikkonen, Schumacher, Hamilton, all have been powered by the three-pointed star. Celebrities, too, have found the Stuttgart brand's appeal irresistible ever since the achingly beautiful 300 SL Gullwing was first launched at the 1954 New York International Motorsports Show and became first choice for the famous, everyone from Grace Kelly to Sophia Loren. Today, it still looks gorgeous. And the opportunity to drive one is a chance not to be missed. Now, the version of this design that most wanted was the Roadster model that arrived in 1957. One of the most desirable convertibles ever made and one of the rarest especially in race-prepared SLS form, built to challenge the might of Ferrari and Maserati in the prestigious American Sports Car Championship. Its modern-day successor, the SLS AMG Roadster, will be just as rare and just as desired by future generations. In fixed-top coupe form, with its unique gullwing doors, this design has already stopped the celebrity set in their tracks with an endless list of celebrity owners forsaking Ferrari and turning Teutonic. Eddie Murphy, Mark Wahlberg, Jonathan Ross, JK, Boris Becker, David Beckham, Floyd Mayweather and Roger Federer among them. All now have their eyes on the SLS in its most desirable form. And we're going to drive it. Now, I'm going to let you into a little secret here. Many supercars aren't all they're cracked up to be. Yes, they look great and they can go fast in a straight line, but many start to lose their luster once you really start to drive them. That's when you start to appreciate all the compromises that come with form over function. Once the novelty's worn off, you start wishing that you were in something less temperamental, something that was easier to see out of and not such a pain to park. Mercedes-Benz doesn't make supercars like that. It didn't back in the sepia-tinted days of the 50s, and it doesn't now. But you don't buy something like this for sense and sensibility, too much of which was served up by the company's first modern-era pin-up performance model, the disappointing SLR of 2004. Now, there was nothing especially memorable about that car. This one's very different. I can't wait to take it out on the road. OK, so it doesn't have the coupe version's jaw-dropping gullwing doors, but the design of this model series never originally envisaged them anyway. The SLS was created on the stylist's sketch pad exactly as it is here, ruthless, uncompromising and sensational. The Roadster version is 40 kilograms heavier than its fixed top counterpart, but potential owners shouldn't worry. Just Think of it as another crate of Dom Perignon stuffed in the tiny trunk out back. The extra bulk certainly doesn't affect the performance. 
select either Sport Plus or Manual from the AMG drive unit, a little rotary controller down here by the auto gear stick, and it'll help the big bulletproof 6.2 litre V8 up front storm from rest to 62 miles an hour in just 3.8 seconds. Uh, a rush of power that'll keep coming until a line of software stops the fun at 197 miles an hour. It's all part of an old school approach to the supercar segment. No four wheel drive, fancy turbos or adaptive suspension. Just rear wheel drive, ordinary steel coil suspension and lots and lots of power. Just listen to it. What you're hearing is not the highly strung exhaust note of an Italian diva car. No, what you're hearing under that drag strip of a bonnet up front is the most powerful naturally aspirated V8 power plant in the world. The handiwork of one man at AMG's Affolterback factory. My compliments Herr Gunther, who uh, creates the engine, then signs his name on a little plaque on the inlet manifold. So if it goes wrong, you'll know who to call. But of course, it doesn't go wrong. It goes, well, like this. This isn't a car that's defined by its numbers or its facts. The SLS experience is all about sensation, how it makes you feel. Imagine rolling along the Promenade des Anglais in Cannes on a super saturated summer's day, making the beautiful people look that little bit less luminous. That's what this Mercedes can do. It has that X factor, call it charisma, authenticity, whatever you like. But the result is the creation of something that's more than just a very fast sports car. The result is an experience to remember. Of course, in driving such a car, you don't always want an experience to remember. After all, a supercar is often at its worst when you're merely collecting your dry cleaning. And here, well, it's true that an SLS is built for brutal acceleration, sideways tyre squealing and three-figure midnight autobahn runs. But this car has also been created to flatter you when you're merely parading along. So civilised in ordinary use that it's easy to forget how comically over-endowed it is in the acceleration department. The ride's excellent, there's a silky smooth twin clutch gearbox, there's decent ground clearance for speed humps and you can see out of the thing. So much so that sometimes it lulls you into a sense of mundanity, you're back in the ordinary world. But then the road opens up, you plant your right foot, the engine roars and you suddenly find yourself having to think and act really quickly. At least you won't need too much practice to achieve the perfect getaway. This Roadster's race start mode guarantees you the perfect launch every time. Left foot on the brake, ESP sport mode selected, race start program ready to go. Engage first gear and get ready to floor the throttle because as soon as you sidestep the brake pedal, the car will rocket forward off the line cleverly sniffing out every ounce of grip available, wet or dry. Childish? Uh, a little. Fun? Oh yes! Convertibles the world over have a drawback. They're very rarely a dynamic match for their coupe counterparts. Now this is down to simple physics. Take a shoebox. It's a pretty rigid thing with the top on, but take the lid off and it flops about all over the place. It's the same with cars, which is why convertibles don't tend to drive as well as coupes. This Mercedes is different. You see, this isn't a coupe with the roof lopped off. 
This car was created from the very outset to be a convertible with all the strengthening already built in to the all aluminium chassis. The SLS was designed from the very beginning to ruffle your hair, which is why, if anything, this Roadster version is even better balanced than its coupe counterpart. It was also created to be driven and driven hard, which is why the engine is placed so far back behind the line of the front axle to improve the handling. How does that work? Well, imagine pushing a trolley around the store with a case of beers in front. It'd be a right handful to turn around the corners, wouldn't it? But push that 24 pack to the rear of the trolley and it'll turn around the bends much easier. Same principle here. Enough though about the engineering. Just look at this thing. It's hard to know where to start with some of the detailing. From the delightful gear shifter to the nanoparticle paint finish. From the inbuilt lap timer to the gorgeous jet turbine inspired air vents. This car is jam packed with the kind of considered details that you'd expect at this kind of price level. Take the fabric convertible roof, quite a piece of work. Available in black, red and beige, this triple layer hood retracts in just 11 seconds at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour and folds cleanly into a compact Z shape into the area behind the seats, the central roof section neatly doubling up as a tonneau cover for the roof compartment. It's been tested against almost every climatic extreme on the planet and might just be the most advanced soft top ever built. What's more, it doesn't eat into your boot space. There's still 173 litres back here. That's just three litres less than the coupe and it's still enough for a golf bag. You might want to be a bit careful with this rear wing on the back though. It deploys automatically at 70 miles an hour, which might be a bit of an advertisement to the police when you whistle past. Just have the excuse ready that it can be activated manually. If you're thinking of buying this car, then you probably won't be agonizing about how you're gonna pay for it. Nevertheless, you'll probably be interested to know how it financially fits in the most exclusive segment of the open top supercar market. And the answer is that it takes something of a middle ground. The 180,000 pound budget you'll need for one of these, that's a premium of just over 8,000 pounds more than the fixed top coupe SLS AMG. Well, that's about 10 to 15% more than you'd pay for say a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider or an Aston Martin Virage Volante. But it's about 10 to 15% less than you'd pay for open top Spider versions of cars like Ferrari's 458 Italia or the McLaren MP4 12C. The premium that you'll pay for this car over its coupe counterpart doesn't buy you any more equipment, but then you're gonna wanna have quite a say in that yourself. It's almost unheard of for an SLS AMG to be delivered to a customer in baseline trim. Exclusivity is the watchword here. The last thing that supercar customers want is to see something identical come in the other way. Which is why Mercedes goes to great lengths to offer its customers almost endless trim and equipment permutations. You can lose yourself for hours in the online configurator, pondering whether to have carbon fiber mirror housings, two-tone Designo leather trim, or um, a matte finish for the forged AMG alloy wheels. Better though to make your choice in reality rather than on a screen, which is why at Mercedes-Benz World there's a specialist dealership with experts who can walk you through the entire process from a starting point that of course is already richly specified. Every SLS comes with lightweight magnesium frame sports seats, a multifunction steering wheel, a three mode stability control system, a thumping stereo and advanced satellite navigation. Of course, it's possible to really push the boat out by specifying extras like a, an 11 speaker, 1000 watt Bang & Olufsen sound setup, an all carbon fiber interior, or a glistening alu-beam paint finish. You could also specify the ceramic brakes that I've got here for the kind of money that would put a family hatchback in the garage next door. I'd think twice before doing that. 
Uh, these ceramic brakes need to be up to quite an operating temperature before they really work properly. The, the kind of temperature you can only achieve by driving so fast that you might as well storm down to the local police station and give yourself up. The wealthy take a keener interest than you might think in cost of ownership figures for a supercar like this. Now depreciation of course is the big ticket, but even fuel economy is important. Not in terms of miles per gallon, but the range that you'll get. Now this SLS has a 95 litre fuel tank, so you won't need to brush your brogues on filling station forecourts too often. It'll be quite enough for transcontinental travel. You'll want to look after this car too. It uh, responds best when you tend to it, when you look after it. Maybe even warm it up on a cold morning, bathing the engine in hot oil so that it's ready for when you need it to give of its best. If you want the key running cost statistics, well, you're looking at 21.4 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and a faintly frightening CO2 return of 308 grams per kilometre. Insurance, of course, is a top of the shop Group 50. Brooklands is a part of automotive heritage. So, once upon a time was the money no object German supercar. Back in the 50s, Hollywood film stars drove them, but in the modern era, you'd have something low slung and Italian. Or would you? The SLS has changed things in this sector. It's dynamic, it's desirable, and best of all, it's different. Which is what really matters in this segment. In many ways, a McLaren MP4-12C is merely a very good copy of a Ferrari 458 Italia. Were you to be fabulously wealthy, you'd need only to choose one or the other. But a Mercedes SLS AMG, particularly in roadster form, is a car many would want to own whatever else already lay in residence in their air-conditioned timber frame garage. Best of all, perhaps, ordinary people love it. In an age when pin-up performance cars often excite more jealousy than passion from passers-by, this one just makes them smile. You get the thumbs up as you power on, and when you arrive and park up, kids want to take pictures. The world seems a better place. This, you see, is something very special. A supercar with soul.